Hey guys, this is AEC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is a variable speed blower motor that's bad, okay? Um, this particular one is a Gentech ECM 3.0, okay, but you could be working with a 2.0, a 2.3, a 2.5, or a 3.0, okay, in the variable speed blower motors. So, um, it actually has two parts to it, okay? This is the Beller hub assembly, all right, and then this is the actual wound motor. All right, so what I want to do is I want to go over uh, the, the different parts and how to test them to see now that you know you have a bad blower motor, all right, what of the two pieces is bad and should you replace just one or the other, okay? Or should you just replace the entire assembly? All right, so that's what we're going over today. So there's two screws in the back, all right? So, and if you take this off, uh, it's, it'll be easy to put it back together again. It's not like it's a big deal, all right? It's just quarter inch, quarter inch uh, head right there. All right. Now you don't pull too hard, okay? You have the wires right here; they're all twisted together, so it's equal force on that plug. All right. Just to show you, you just have to squeeze that part right there to take it out. All right. This board is what's called fully potted, all right? It's actually uh, resistant to water uh, instead of just having an open control board, okay? You can see the part that actually failed on this, all right? Um, but basically, this is a control board, all right, that's encased. So we're gonna set this to, to the side right here. And this, you have your wound motor, all right? This actually is a three-phase motor, so it's very simple to check this thing, all right? So we're going to check on resistance, all right? You have to have the power off on that. Obviously, we have the power off. It's all disconnected and everything, all right? But you always have to have power off to read resistance and power off to read continuity. All right, now we're going to read resistance between any of the three pairs of wires on this three-phase motor. They should be the same amount of resistance. So between the black and the blue, we're reading about 10.3. Now between the blue and the red, ten point six. All right, now we're gonna go between the black and the red. Now remember. You're not getting the exact resistance just because of how tight I'm trying to press on here. All right, 10.3. All right, they should all be roughly about the same. If you're getting a reading that's off, you may not be pressing hard enough actually on the wires. All right, the actual wires may not have a great connection on them either as well. There might be some corrosion on them, but, but these are the same. All right, so we got about 10.3, 10.4, 10.7. If this was, if this motor was bad, you'd be getting, you know, maybe three ohms off, or actually you might have what you're reading right now, OL, which would mean that one of the wiring uh, or one of the windings is actually burnt out, all right? If you got 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance, that would be like two windings actually touching each other, all right? The other thing that you want to do when checking this, you want to check, you, let's go with the black first, and we're going to check the ground, all right? We got nothing there. All right, now we're going to check the blue. You want to make sure that these windings are not shorted along the frame, okay? Once again, we got OL. So that's all good. That means it's over limit. That means that, that those two uh, sections of metal are not touching, okay? The winding and the frame are not touching, all right? So this part is good. All right, this this motor is good, and most of the time that I, what I find is is the motor actually is good, and it's just the bell housing, all right, or the hub. So then the question is, should you replace just the hub? All right. The one thing is the manufacturer when you're doing warranties, if they're going to supply both items, you might as well go ahead and replace both items. You can get a little bit more life out of your your motor. But what that will do, though, is uh, if it's a parts-only warranty, then you still have to pay the laborer. you got to think you're going to uh, pull the blower motor out and reseat the blower motor back in there again. Whereas if you just replace the hub or the bell 
all you're doing is you're taking two screws off the back, you're pulling this off, you're putting the new one on, and you're done. Okay? The next consideration to have is the cost. Say it's out of warranty, um, and say you just want to replace this part, you know the motor's good, and you say, hey, I want to save some money, and I want to just buy this. A lot of times, I'll tell you that a lot of times, the price difference between the, the hub or bell assembly by itself compared to the motor is pretty minuscule. All right, so just say these variable speed blower motors, depending on the size, uh, you know, just say they're half horse, three quarter horse, one horse, you know, they could be anywhere from say, I'm just, I'm just throwing numbers out here, but $350,000, you know, and when you, when you say you only want this, it's usually only say 50, a hundred bucks difference. Okay. Now everybody's going to have different um, versions of the story or whatever, you know, everybody's going to have little variations in this, but I, I will tell you that most manufacturers are, are charging, um, or distributors actually are charging something very close to the same for if you just bought this versus if you bought the whole assembly of this and the motor together, all right? It does take a little bit more labor to uh, replace the actual motor assembly. Um, but each case is going to be different. So I just want to kind of spell these things out for you just so you can think about what, what works for you. All right. So if you're in a pinch for time and, you know, you can, you can get a hold of this, you can just replace this. The other thing is, I guess one more thing I should tell you is depending on the manufacturer, remember that the manufacturer is the one that has programmed these. All right. To accept the speeds uh, for, uh, the, you know, through the control board. Uh, for a uh, certain model or manufacturer, all right? So what if, you know, the distributor's out of, out of the hubs? And that's happened to me before as well. In that case, you know, you're kind of stuck, all right? Uh, but if they have the hub and the motor assembly all as one, they typically have that, you know, then, then you might be forced to go that route, all right? So I just want to kind of throw these things out here. It's all food for thought. Uh, just so you know it before you run into this situation, uh, but but that's those are some of the considerations you should take uh, when after troubleshooting a uh, variable speed blower motor. All right. So once again, that has to do with the uh, the ECM 2.0, 2.3, 2.5, and 3.0. Just so you know, you're going to re be replacing the 2.0s with the 2.3s most likely, but you got to check whatever the manufacturer's calling for. That's what you're going to do. Um, and basically the 2.0 and the 2.5 are no longer in production. You just have the 2.3 and the 3.0 as of this date and time, you know, that I'm, that I'm uh, publishing this video. So, but that's that. All right. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.